I'm making $140,000 a year as a software engineer at Google. And today's my last day. Jordan, how you doing, bro? Can I get a burrito bowl? Appreciate it. Don't get it twisted. I'm not getting fired. I'm quitting. I joined Google to quit. Let me explain. Come with me. Thank you, Jordan. Google is an incredible place to work. From the pay, the benefits, the culture, how they take care of their employees, a match. But I realized over time that this isn't the long-term job for me. That realization took me 18 years to get to. For as long as I can remember, I've been in love with computers and technology. My parents have pictures of me at two years old on an old brick looking laptop, just messing around on it. And I think my love for computers grew into a love for video games, most notably Roblox and Minecraft. What I loved about Roblox was not only could you play games on it, but you could learn how to make games. I thought that was such a cool world to explore. And in order to make a video game, you need to know how to code. Through Roblox, I got opened up to the world of computer programming and coding and all that cool stuff. I remember being 11, 12, 13 years old, like scouring the internet, watching YouTube videos, reading wiki.roblox.com forms to understand how to put code together to make a game that I thought was cool and fun to play. And over the years, I developed a big interest in computer programming. Around the same time I was playing Roblox, I was also playing a lot of Minecraft. And I remember I started my first YouTube channel based on Minecraft content. I would screen record, I had my little headset on with the microphone, and I would sound like this 11 year old squeaker on the microphone talking about what I was doing in the game. And I would post videos like every week I remember recording with this free like recording software I don't even remember the name of and editing on Windows Movie Maker and posting for the world to see. By world, I mean just the friends around me and like 10 other people on the internet. Don't try to go looking on the internet for the YouTube channel because you won't find it. Videos have been put on private. Looking back, there's always been my love for technology and my love for creativity and creating videos. I couldn't see it at the time, but my love for creating games on Roblox and filming videos for YouTube at such a young age will create a big source of tension as my love for both grew into my young adult life. I may not miss this cold, but I'm gonna miss this food. Mmm, I gotta get a drink. those videos as a kid it was never anything more than a little hobby but that started to change as high school and college started to roll around by the time i got to 10th 11th 12th grade i wasn't making minecraft videos anymore but i was still making youtube videos and i was still coding i got a mentor his name was dr rod he had a phd in computer science and he was black and i thought that was so cool to see someone who looks like me to be in such a high position for the field of computer science because that's not something that you see often he took me under his wing and made sure i knew everything i needed to know to get into a good college my parents told me i was always going to college that wasn't a choice so i said if i have to go to college i might as well study this computer science thing that allows me to make video games and you know i enjoy it to a certain extent at the same time though i was still making youtube videos but this time i was making more sit down style videos just talking about life talking about things i was going through things with my christian faith things with just dealing with social media and all that type of stuff but in high school was the first time that i really thought maybe i could make this youtube thing work i was watching tanner Braungart, tanner fox foozy too all these people making a career off of making videos on youtube and i thought that was the coolest job ever but i just never saw it in the cards for me because i didn't think I was that creative and my parents told me that really the only way to get a good job was to go to college and get a degree. I never really took myself seriously. So most of my focus was on getting into a good school, which led me to go to Georgia Tech and study computer science. But little did I know that going to Georgia Tech to study computer science would change my life trajectory in a way that I could have never imagined. After my first year of college, I was fortunate enough to land an internship at Google in New York City. I applied on the night of the last day for the application and I still got a job. That is the only place that I got a job at. And I was so excited, like this is the pinnacle of places to work as a software engineer. So my family, my friends, and I was super excited to have that opportunity. And I loved it. I loved the coding, I loved the challenge. 
Um, I love the problem solving, I love the people I work with, and I love the city of New York. But I also love photography at the time. I remember up to this point, I've been asking my parents to buy me a camera for Christmas and my birthday for like five years, it had to be. And they told me they didn't think it was that good of an investment at the time. Now that I had this high paying job as an intern in New York City, I said, I'm gonna buy myself a camera. So I bought one, it was a Nikon D5600, and I was running the streets of New York with it. I remember being at work, it was probably the first or second week of work. I remember it was a Friday night, five o'clock or six o'clock was about to hit. And I remember typing New York City photography meetups. And there was one just so happening the next day. So I signed up immediately, went home, charged all my batteries and got up really early the next morning, caught a train and walked all the way to the meetup. That meetup really opened my eyes to the possibility of what I could do with this photography thing. I met so many models and photographers that were just as passionate about this photography hobby. And for some of them, it wasn't even a hobby, it was their full-time profession. I would work at Google during the week and then edit all the photos that I shot from the previous weekend after work every day. When I came back to Atlanta, I had a whole new perspective on life. I was like, forget this school stuff. I'm about to be a photographer and videographer. I got paid for the first time in New York. And then when I came back to Atlanta, I had some opportunities to make a little bit of money here and there, but it wasn't enough to sustain myself. I knew as soon as I could replace my income as a software engineer with my income as a director, I'd be out of there. I remember so many times in college when I wanted to quit and I wanted to leave and drop out because I was tired of it. <laughs> I mean, being at Georgia Tech was difficult. It's one of the hardest schools in the world for computer science and trying to get a degree from there and build a photography and videography business was a lot of work. There are a lot of times when I just wanted to drop out of school and do what I wanted to do, but I knew deep down that it wasn't time yet. I wasn't making enough consistent money to be able to pay bills. So I knew I had no other choice but to just stick through school and to continue building my brand up to the point where it could sustain me. But from that point on, I knew that my one goal would be to make enough money from my own stuff that I wouldn't have to rely on a nine to five. I'm finally making enough money off of Shot by Nehemiah to leave Google. I know I told y'all at the beginning of this video that I joined Google with the intent of leaving. That's what I meant. I took a long journey of me discovering my creativity as a kid through YouTube videos, getting to Georgia Tech as a college student to give myself the opportunity and the connections and placement to be able to build my business to where I've built it now. And it's taken a lot of patience and persistence to build it from just freelancing into something that can sustain me long-term. I started Google back in August. It's now the end of February, almost March. And in just six, seven-ish months, um, I'm leaving. I tried to hold on as long as I could to stack as much money as I could to give myself the best chance at my business as a director. But it got to the point where I couldn't balance both anymore. And there was a lot of pressure on me because Google is such an incredible company. I mean, the money I'm making, the connections that I've made, the security that I have, that's really hard to give up for something that's so unsure as freelancing and entrepreneurship. And there were a lot of voices around me early on saying that I should go to college, that I should get something stable and all of that. So my mindset has been built to take the stable route and the traditional route because that's what my parents did and that's what a lot of other people that I've looked up to did with themselves as well, right? The people that I love most and I looked up to the most were telling me to do that. So that's what I did. As I became an adult and graduated from college, I quickly realized that this is not for me. Like being stuck at a desk working nine to five as a software engineer is super unfulfilling and super boring. <laughs> And I didn't realize how depressed I was until I decided to leave. And that decision to leave was a really long one. It took me a minute to really accept for myself and know that this was the right decision for me. I remember telling my parents that I wanted to leave and their initial reaction was like, nah, like that's not a good idea. They did it in a very loving and understanding way, but their whole mindset was they want to keep me safe. They're firstborn kids. They want me to be successful. So the most successful way to do that would be to go through Google. And that really deflated my balloon, bro. Like I felt like my whole dreams were crushed in that moment because I was so sure in my head that like now is the right time. I'm making enough money every month to support myself and invest back into the business. Why am I staying, right? But I talked to them and they were like, nah, like that's not, that's not a good idea. So they didn't agree. And after a couple of weeks of really sitting with it and talking to loved ones and friends, watching Gary V, I realized that I have to live my own life. Nobody else is gonna live my life for me. So I shouldn't be making decisions based on the opinions of others. I should absolutely ask for advice and take what I can from people that uh, is useful to me and just leave the rest. When I tell y'all, when I decided in my head that I'm going to do what I know is best for me and what I've been created to do, that next day when I decided that I was leaving Google no matter what anybody had to say, it felt like Christmas morning. I just remember being a kid at 11 years old and dreaming about being as big as those Minecraft YouTubers I watched. I remember being 15 years old dreaming about being as big as those vlog YouTubers that I watched. And even 
in college, like looking at other photographers and directors and videographers doing what they were doing, I saw myself doing that, but it just wasn't my time yet. And now that I'm here at 22 years old, able to do it at my last day at one of the best jobs in the world, jumping into the deep end for what I love, I'm incredibly grateful. Being at Google has afforded me incredible opportunities to sustain me long enough to get this off the ground. And now that this is off the ground, it's time to go full force into it and make it work. My chapter at Google is coming to a poetic close, and it's time for me to write the rest of my story.